Let's take a look at another field study that I was involved with. This one was out in California at the edge of the Mojave Desert. As you can see, my track points are laid down on US 395. I overshot the turnoff just a bit, so I've got some points to the north there. But then I rode, drove down this road to the point where my vehicle couldn't make it up the dirt road anymore. So I got out and took a waypoint right there. As you can see, I had a hike that took me across quite a few contour lines, which means it was pretty steep. This is what it looked like when I started hiking. I had to go up these ridges. Now I've changed my base map to a Bing Maps image base. My route up was along the red line on the right hand side or the north side. I went down this gully up this next ridge to this point right here. If I swing around, and back up, this is my view from the top. And this is my ground photograph at that point. On the way down, I was a little smarter and hugged the gully at the right here. Down here I came into a nice grove of Joshua trees. And this is what they looked like. Yes, it was a great hike. Now, as you can see, as I was walking down, hugging the gully, I had a much easier time. On my way up, I went down and up this big ridge and then across this ridge. But it's all part of the adventure. But eventually, as I'm following with the mouse here, I rejoined the way I'd come in. So the last part of the hike, where I was collecting the data out in the desert, back to the waypoint where the vehicle was parked was along the same path that I had taken in. And then back to the highway. Once I was done I had a whole series of waypoints and track points as well as photographs and videos that I had taken on site. I now had data on tree species, plants, animals, temperature, humidity, and other variables that I could then map inside ArcGIS Explorer desktop. Remember that mapping the location of these places is not the end-all be-all, folks. What your goal is, is to analyze the distribution of the phenomenon that you are mapping. So for example, in my case, I wanted to look at why do the Joshua trees only grow in a certain grove, which is about right here? I'm really fascinated to find out why these beautiful Joshua tree groves only grow in certain places. So, for example, during my field study, I found out that they only grow right here. They weren't any higher in elevation, and they weren't any lower in, ele in elevation. They were only right here, in about a football field size of an area. Is it some combination of variables or a single variable that's responsible? Is it soil type? Is it soil moisture? Is it whether this particular patch of ground is shady or sunny during certain parts of the day, depending on the sun angle and the surrounding hills and mountains? Is it the water table? Does it have something to do with 
seeds brought around by rodents or other animals in the area. So remember, your field data, the locations of your field points, they're important. It's important to know where things are located. And so GPS is definitely an aid. Another aid is powerful GIS tools like ArcGIS Explorer Desktop. Remember that when you're mapping your data, don't just map the locations. Try to figure out the whys of where. In my case, it's my Joshua Tree study. In your case, it might be something else entirely, the locations of historical buildings, or why pH changes along streams, or some other variable. To me, the goal is to figure out the whys of where, the geographic pattern. Thanks.